Hey, it's Don the Art Professor. Today we're going to show you how to do some more Victorian Christmas ornaments. We're going to show you start to finish. It goes along with the other ones that I did in the prior video. So if you haven't watched the prior video, I would honestly recommend it just because some of the techniques and things that we will use in this video, we show you how to create in the first video. So there is a link down below so you'll be able to get to it. But we're going to show you how to do these Dresden ones and create a faux embossing. As you can see, the wings have patterns on them as well as the halo on top. Now, this is a faithful recreation of an original one that would have been around in the 1870s, 80s, and 90s. And I've tried to recreate the Dresden embossing. You can see the patterns on the wings as well as the halo. The centerpiece, just like in the other one, is an original 1880s or 90s die cut of the Victorian era. So everything else we've created, and again, watch the first video if you want to see how we got the paper and the dress skirting parts and that kind of stuff too. Now this one here too has some of the other things we did in the first video, plus we have the wool roving on here to make a cloud around it. It's basically the same construction as the other ones. These have twine string on here as you can see, but we'll show you how to make these start to finish if you're interested. Many times if you go to a Christmas bazaar or festival for Christmas, you'll see Christmas trees and they'll have all of these sorts of ornaments on them where all the ornaments are for sale. That's one of the main places you'll see these displayed locally if you want to buy something like this or if you want to set up and do something like that. These do sell online also. The Dresden recreations sell fairly well depending on your skills and how much time you take to do one of these. They can sell on Etsy, Homemade by Amazon, eBay, and there are some Christmas oriented sites as well but Let's head over there now and show you how we made these. Okay, to start with, I've drawn out a pattern that everybody can use. And there'll be a link to this where you can just download a copy of this. So you'll have the template. You can print these out onto different colored cardstock if you wish. Or just cut a pattern out and then trace them onto whatever cardstock you want. Now, I'm going to use the same stuff that I used in the last video. I've spray painted pieces of cardstock and you can rub them down a little bit you can get them a little dingier it has a more vintage look this way if you want to see what I did just go back and watch the video prior to this I'll have a link right up above right now actually for you so now I've cut out some of these pieces here and let me just go ahead and show you this was cut out in gold I've got another gold piece there there's gold and I got these red here and then I've cut out wings as well. Now the wings themselves, you see the pattern on there. I'm going to show you how to emboss these sort of. And then we're going to spray them to match these. Or silver actually for the wings. So let's do that real quick here now. Just so you can see. So we're just going to take one of the wings in a ballpoint pen. And you're just going to impress as hard as you can into the cardstock. Again, we printed on cardstock. That's the key to this. And we're just gonna go around and do this a couple of times really hard, put some pressure on it as you go around the whole design. So do it a couple of times. Doesn't matter if it's perfectly aligned or anything like that. You just wanna start a groove. And we're gonna paint over this, so don't worry what it looks like now. So this is how I say you can make some that look like Dresden. Now, depending on how much time you want to spend on doing the uh, indentation here, the embossing part, will depend on, you know, you. If you put a lot of time and effort into it, you can get it to emboss. And that means you'll see it on the other side like that. So hopefully you can see that. Now, there's tools you can get like an embosser, and you can go in here and really emboss it if you wish let me just do a couple here again we're painting over this so it doesn't matter and this will give it an embossed design to it it'll give it a feel of embossing as well even if it's not really embossed now these embossers or whatever you'd like to call them come in different sizes this just happens to be the one that I got handy. So we're just going to go right along. Now, again, you can put patterns into this aspect of it or whatever you want. 
I'm just doing enough to be basic. So now on the other side, it's even more embossed. It has almost two layers of embossing. And if something isn't quite embossed enough for you, just come back in and draw it again. It'll actually curl the paper. You can literally feel it in there. So this is how I would say um, you can do your own embossing if that's what you wish. So we're going to do this much deeper. Again, we're doing a Dresden look, and Dresden's all embossed stuff. So this is what I do. Again, the tools, you can get something else with a wider end and do a whole bunch at once. So you're not doing multiple layers. I have better control with the ballpoint pen, so that's what I am doing. And again, once we've painted this, you won't see any of these marks. So there we go. That's the embossed image there. As you can see it, it's all the way through. So again, if you want to make this even more embossed, you can come back in here and, and really embed this in there. It just depends on what you want to do with this. So, you know, it just depends. You can see that's already raised more than the rest. But the basics are all I'm going to do today. So we'll pop up and do the next part. Now I'm also going to emboss the halo and you can see it even went into here a little bit. So we're just going to do it from here too. I'm just going to draw like a center point. Oops, let's do it a little better than that. <clears throat> and then we'll draw another center point. to just draw some rays. We're going to put it on top of her head, so that's probably, let's just put some more rays this way. And it doesn't have to be perfect. We're just looking for that pattern in there. So there we go with a pretty good pattern for Halo. Just so you can see. Now these I'm going to include too. I'll actually probably have all of these right here. So you'll have a scan of each of these or a photo, whatever the case may be. So there'll be two attachments. You'll have one for the piece of paper, which is this piece here. And then you'll have a second one underneath this video for some figures. Now we'll be doing a couple of these. The next one will also cover um, some other items of Victorian. So I'll have another video coming out after this still covering some other aspects. We're gonna cover quite a few things in the Victorian era. So now we got everything from the image here that we need. Let's turn it this way, because it doesn't really matter where they're at. So again, this is gold. We can just place that on there. I've got the back that's gold. We've done the halo now, and you can see the pattern in it. It kind of makes it look a little bit more like Dresden. Now you can see the wings too. Um, you can see the pattern in there very clearly. Little hint here, if you flip them upside down, this side will be the better side, the side you did not draw on, if you would prefer to have that up front. So those are those. And then we've got the two red pieces. Now I just ran some watercolor over these real quick just to get them in here. This is the basis for making this. And then we have this piece here. And then we have some twine. Now I use for the tie piece on there, I use twine. It has a aged look to it. So you don't have to worry about you know buying anything. It's really cheap, it's household twine secure line. I don't think it really matters. Just get this stuff. It feels really silky and really matches the Victorian era thread. So just FYI on that one. And that's like a dollar or two for the whole thing. So let's go ahead and start putting this together then. Okay, so now we're going to take this and we're going to decorate the dress part here first. Now I'm just going to kind of see where this all falls in here where we're going to put it. So let's make sure we're going to cover everything up. 
You, know, you always want to kind of test it first. Again, you can see the embossing uh, look to it there. That's all I was looking for in it. So you can kind of see what I'm talking about. Same with the halo. Now we're going to add some tinsel, as you saw, behind the halo part. I don't worry if it's exact, correct, straight, or anything like that. That looks to be fairly close to what I want. Um, so we're going to glue this piece on right there. going to glue that. going to put a little bit there and we're going to fold this over just like that. We'll do the same. It doesn't matter if they're exactly the same on both sides. It's not going to hurt. No one's going to pay any attention to that. Now I'm going to also wrap it like this so we can have a unique back. So that's what we're going for there. So let's take this off and squeeze some back on here. You gotta be quick. Okay, so then we're going to just lightly put this down here. We don't want to get too much. Just enough to hold it in place. And again, you're not going to see it because it's clear. So this is going to be the dress part. So that's that. So it's starting to look closer. Let's go a little bit more down on these here, just so they don't pull up on us. So let's take another look, make sure we've got it going on good. So far, so good. And then the wings, obviously. Okay, so let's go ahead and we're going to put this piece on here. to the top. That's what we're going to go. And then this piece is going to be obviously covering up the back. So don't worry about that. Let's go ahead and glue this one in. We'll just glue one side, hold it firm. This will stiffen it up too because there's a lot of paper in this area. So we're just going to put some more glue on here. Hold it down for a minute. Again, this will actually weight it, as I said. That's part of the whole aspect of why I do it the way I do. And if there's any on it, you can just pluck it off. It will discolor the gold, which is perfectly fine. Okay, so we've got that one. That one's going to be covered up, as I said. Let's line this one back up here. Again, it's just going to be her dress, that's all. We want it a little more colorful. These are the color schemes that they would have used back then, so that's why I'm using them here as well. So We're going to glue them together in pieces, as you see, so let's go ahead and glue this one on. That's that. And if you creased it, you should just be able to fold it right up where the crease was. And then we've got the top half to do here. Somebody asked on the glue gun I use. This is it right here. Adtech 2-temp glue gun. It takes the large sticks 
It has a high and a low. I'll try and remember to put a link down to it below. These work the best. It's like a, um, a gun almost of some sort, like a, literally a glue gun, and it works the best. It has the best control. It has this little stand here. Now, it does drip a little bit when you have it on high, but no biggie there. Okay, so there's the dress of it right there, and this is a nice hefty piece. Okay, we're going to glue the head on, but we need to put a little tinsel on there too. So we're going to grab a little bit of tinsel, because we're just going to put a little bit on there. Okay, so I've just grabbed and I cut off a little tiny piece of it right there, and we're just going to put a little dab in the center, just like that. And then we're gonna fan these out as best we can and stick it down. We don't want a lot, we want it to look aged a little bit, so we're gonna cut off any extra, pull off what doesn't belong. And you don't want a ton, you just want a nice little representation. Any other ones that are too long, we can just trim them. If we don't want them somewhere, they will come off. Okay, yeah, it does make a mess. That's the only bad part. But it's worth the extra effort. We're actually almost done with this. See what that looks like. Just depends on how much you want. I just want a little bit of rays coming out. So you could come back in and do a second layer if that's what you want, and then fill in some. Now this one's a little too tall for sure. There we go. Just enough to add some color to it is all I really wanted. So let's go ahead and glue it from this side this time. We're just going to put a little bit on the head. It's going to be your preference on how you stick these together, obviously. Okay, so now we've got two pieces here. We still have the wings and the back piece and then the string. And you can see the light embossing that we did on there too. So let's see about the wings. We want the wings about Out like that. I think we'll have to glue this on here. We're going to glue the angel on now. too much glue so we're gonna squeeze it back down let that dry for just a minute there you can see we're working along here if you get any glue as I said you can scrape it off with your fingernail fairly easily we are gonna put some tinsel there so I won't worry about that okay don't forget these wings are backwards on here so we're going to just dip the tips of the wings. We're going to glue them by this area right here, just like that. And before you push it together, make sure you got it just where you want it. Just like that. Okay, you can see the wing. Now we can glue it down a little bit better back here. Just a little dab will do that spot there. Again, it's got that agey look to it, which is fine. I'm going to go ahead and get the other wing on there. They don't have to be exactly the same. She doesn't have arms. It's a typical thing. They just used whatever scrap they could at the end of the day. So let's just get a little bit right there. So there we go. 
Okay, that's why this piece comes in here, because that's going to go back on here, and it's going to cover up all the bad stuff on the back. And the string's going to come in from behind there as well, too. So that's that part. Okay, we're probably going to stick a little bit of the tinsel up here, too. In fact, we're going to use what we already cut. Get it kind of lined up together. We're going to split one little dab right there. Need to cut it so it's leveled at one side. Let's just clean it up a little bit. Now on this side, I'm just going to let them fly, however long they are, short they are. Just pluck off the loose ones. And it's just a little bit of a gilt to it, or a glisten, I guess I, I would say I added. And this is literally what an original would look like, basically. So let's clean off. These are a little bit too long for my taste. Okay, that's fine. Any little tiny strays will flick off as well. So far, so good. Now all we've got to do is come up with the string length. I'm going to cut a longer length, and we'll just chop it down so I can easily determine the length I want. Do it right about there. So we're going to cut off in this section there. Okay. I always twist these together a little bit. Push them down. And we're going to put it in that spot right there in the back. It's a perfect spot. There's right there. And while we're doing this, we're going to go ahead and get this piece on at the same time. Okay, this piece I usually use a little more glue on when I'm doing it. And just kind of line it up. Get the string dead center. Right there is a good spot. Okay, so that is pretty much the angel right there. So that is the ornament. Again, this is a recreation of one I've actually seen in real life. So this is something that you would find. Um, I didn't put the same amount of tinsel they have. It's just a lot. You can do this in many different sizes you would like. But it has the same effect because Dresden came in many different colors. Now, I've got a dull red on here. I could have done it in a shiny red as well. I don't mind the difference because it kind of blends the girl figure into the red too. So anyway, that's this one here. Well, there we are. Hopefully that gave you some ideas. Again, the first video goes into some techniques that we use to create these as well. So if you haven't watched that, I would go back and watch that first video also. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live. Subscribe and tell a friend.